Hi everybody, this is Diane. I'm going to do a short video, I think it'll be short, of a little bit of working on a journal. But first I wanted to show you the ephemera that I made. On yesterday's video, if you watched it, you saw that I was taking some tag bases that I had made. I had cut from scraps of paper. So I had um, bases for tuck spots or journal cards and tags. And this box, this is just a box of stuff that needs to be made into ephemera. So I started working on that in yesterday's video, and I did some more after I turned the camera off, so I just wanted to show you what I did. So I had started with <clears throat> all of these tag bases and found these little fairies, and I don't know what where I got them from. They've been in my stash for a long time. So there were six of them. So I made sure that I did all six and got them all taken care of. So I'm just going to show you the tags that I made. And these were just, like I said, the tag bases were already in that little box. These were in this baggie of reinforcers that I got in a Happy Mail. And this was just a heart punched piece that I had in my stash. So it's all scraps. I have a little container of these flowers that I had die cut a long time ago. Even this corrugated piece was in my scrap bin. So there are five tags and one journal card. And you saw, I think it was this one that I did on camera. Yes, this is the one. So I think these might have been freebies from Ephemera's Vintage Garden that I've had for years. And they're little illustrations from the cute song, um, The Frog, he, he Would a Wooing Go, and He Was Wooing Miss Mouse. So these are images from, from that. And I just put a label at the top and some lace at the bottom cut these long tags out of green cardstock. And then lastly, I have, I don't know, six of these, I think. So I took these flowered papers that I had in my stash. They were six by six papers and I had cut them into tag shapes. And then I got into my stash of printable vintage lady photographs and added some small pieces of lace that were in my scrap bin to make these tags. This one has a butterfly applique added to it. So I made quite a few pieces of ephemera yesterday. So they'll go into my stash of ready-made ephemera to go into whatever journal they'll fit into. Now, this is the journal that I got out to work on. I had started this a couple weekends ago. And I uh, put it away so I could finish the seashell journal. Because um, I had to wait for my sewing machine to get fixed. My sewing machine is repaired. And so here I am working on this again. And I think I had all of this done before. So I need to finish up just the inside of this. I'm going to leave this burgundy. So all I have to do is cover up the raw edges of that fabric with this pretty gimp trim. It matches the cover pretty well. I had my grandsons here today. So it's late afternoon, they've just left, and I'm getting a chance to do my video. 
I did some work on the pages, some sewing work on the pages while they were here. They did work for our church organist, just a little bit of yard work, which didn't take them very long, and they got paid well for it. And after we had our lunch, and they did their little whatever they brought with them to do, while well, I did some sewing in here, and then we took a walk. We've kept pretty um, busy today. And then I have this piece that was saved from the flyleaf page. And I'll just glue that on there. And I'll probably end up putting a pocket on the back, but for now we're going to leave the book cover and look at the pages. So if you haven't seen a video from this from before, it is from Mrs. Cog's kit called The Professionals. A curious illustrations or something like that. And each illustration represents a um, tradesman who are adorned. Their clothing is made of the pieces that they make. So they are wearing their wares, so to speak. This is the goldsmith. So he has is covered in gold pieces that he has made. So I decorated this with gold. There's some gold foiled paper there and this piece of fake gold jewelry and then I made this little card to go inside I put some gold paint around the edge I stamped some script and embossed it in gold and then this is a gold cup and saucer from an old painting I took a tab that I had punched out of tan cardstock and painted it with the gold paint so that gets tucked in there And I don't know how much of this you saw. I don't know if I did this on video or not. So there's ledger behind each of these illustrations because that could be the ledger that they keep track of their customers and orders and things. So this is the wine grower. So I embossed this bunch of grapes on a light, light purple vellum and then colored it in with markers. And... Um, this is an embossed cardstock that I colored with alcohol inks. And I added these purple grape colored um, buttons. And there's a card in here that I will decorate with something to do with grapes. And then this one we have to decorate today. This is the tailor. This is where I had left off when my sewing machine started sewing funny. So I already had the pieces pulled to decorate it with. I don't know if I lost any of them while I was while I've been doing other things, but each of them gets a piece of this um, uh, gold foil type of card that's been die cut. It was a rectangular piece, and I just cut off all the corners and used them on these three images that are on the fronts of the signatures and I also used a piece of it on the cover of the book. And I have another embossed cardstock that I rubbed with vintage photo. This one is the tailor. 
Did I say that already? So it's interesting that built around his middle is a table on which he can cut fabric and have his materials laid out. This is an old cloth um, measuring tape. So that is something that the tailor would need. And then I just have this little medallion. And it seems like there would have been something else that I was going to put on there, but I don't know what. I've got this little tray of sewing charms. So I could put this pair of scissors on it. Yeah, let's do that. going to ink around the edges of this medallion. Once I get this done, I will show you what I have done with some of the other Mrs. Cog's images inside. I think this is a little bit challenging because of all the different um, trades that are represented. So I want to kind of embellish, add embellishments that represent some of those trades, but maybe not all of them because I don't want the book to be too cluttered and disjointed. I'm gonna use my glossy accents to glue the scissors on there. So in the first video that I showed of this journal, I was trying to decide if I what kind of scrapbook papers I wanted to use, whether they would be more classic and elegant to match those images, or bright and um, whimsical to match the book pages that I used, which I will show you when we go inside, if you didn't see that first video and I had opted for the bright ones, but I coffee dyed them. So they have the whimsical look and the pretty colors, but it's not quite as bright because I coffee dyed them and that toned the brightness down. So I'm just gonna set this aside where that uh, glossy accents can dry. Okay, so this is the first signature I started working on. So these are the pages I'm talking about from the book. And this is a book called On Market Street. Thank you for those of you who reminded me of the book title because I couldn't remember. I had bought the book at a flea market uh, a couple of years ago. And I had taken the pages out. I uh, Someone else wanted to purchase some of the pages, so I did that for her and I kept some of the pages for me but I did not have the cover anymore so I didn't know the, the name of it or the illustrator but I was told and I of course as soon as I saw it I remembered oh yes it's on Market Street which makes a lot of sense and I looked it up on Amazon and it's you can't get it cheaply and um, the interesting thing is it was written by Arnold Lobel and his wife Anita illustrated but the seahorse journal that I just created, that's the one I just sold today. As I'm making this video, I just sold it. Uh, no, the, sea, the, sea shop, the seahorse journal I sold earlier in the week. And that was uh, made with a book illustrated by um, Arnold Lobel. But his wife illustrated this. So anyway, so it's the same concept. These people are selling their wares and they are dressed in the thing that they're selling. So that's the flower seller, and we have gloves here. So I could do something with flowers on this page. And if I can find, locate my uh, vintage gloves that I, the 
images that came from that 1912 catalog. I could put them over here somewhere. And then I used these um, printable pages from TLC Creates Vintage and it's called Just the Basics Architecture. So as I said in the other video, I imagined all of these vendors selling their wares in the streets where these buildings are. I just uh, sewed a little trim there. Now, this is what I'm doing with the other smaller illustrations from Mrs. Coggs. There are three sizes of illustrations, four sheets. So there are four of these larger ones, which I used three on the signatures and one on the cover. And then these are the two other sizes. So I took a small one and a larger one, small and medium, and sewed them on the page as little pockets. And then I took my coffee dyed tags and cut them down to slip in there. So this is the tin smith. And I have this little tin jug here from a collector's book, like a pricing guide or something. So I'm going to cut this little tin jug out. So each of the Mrs. Cog's images is sewn onto the page as a pocket. And I would like to decorate each tag with something that represents their particular um, craft that they do. Don't know if I'll be able to do this. So I think what I'll do is just snip it here because I'm going to glue it down. That way I'll be able to cut this out better. The handle is pretty thin and I don't want to cut through it. I have a an embossing folder that is called tin tile for like a tin ceiling. So I think it would be neat. Maybe I have a piece of that already done. I do. It's not very deeply embossed on that one. That one's better if I want to use that color. So this embossing folder from Stampin' Up! is called Tin Tile, and I love it. So I think that would be nice as a background on this uh, Tinsmith tag. These white ones are not very deeply embossed, so I'm going to use this. Cut the square two and a quarter by two and a quarter. There really will be a square. I guess I'll have to cut it a little bit shorter. that way.
I'm not sure what I'm going to put in the holes yet. I don't think I want it to be seam binding. But I'm just going to put that in there till I figure it out. This one is the Lens and Glass Merchant. I brought this lens in with me in case I wanted to do something with that. Might be a little too heavy to have hanging off of that. We can try it, and if you don't like it, we can take it off. But I cut these out of a collector's book about glass. Well, this was the chapter about glass. These pretty glass bottles. It's a beautiful day here today. Got a beautiful breeze. It's not too hot. So I could walk, take a walk with my grandsons in the afternoon. It was uh, about quarter after two, which last week would have been super hot. But today it was lovely. Now I'm thinking I might want to add some color to those so they can be colored glass. I probably was not holding that in the in your view while I was um, cutting that because I forgot I had it zoomed in. I'm looking for something to paint with. I want it to be a uh, sheer, a translucent paint, so it looks like glass. So I'm going to try painting with. One of my inks. So I need to put a lot of water in it to make it more translucent. Yeah, that looks pretty. should the next one be? Since it's on a pink page, I think I'll do some pink. So I have five images, Mrs. Cog's images, in each signature. So that means I have to do five tags for each signature. So that means 15 tags altogether. Now I have to let those dry. And I think maybe behind that I could use some tissue paper or vellum. Let's see what I have in my collage bag here. I 
take out some pieces that I might use for something else. Use it. So that's just um, the 15 tags I was talking about is just for the Mrs. Cog's images. So I'll probably make some pockets and things to go with the um, on Market Street colorful illustrations. I don't have any glassine or tracing paper in here. some coffee dyed tracing paper but I don't want to put that on top of coffee dyed tag well I have some vellum left over from a piece of glassine sandwich bag I have some vellum left over from the seashell journals and I know right where that is just some little scraps so that might work and the colors might be just what I need oh these are little vellum pieces could look like a translucent pretty glass right and it's it, this vellum had a little bit of a lacy pattern which shows up a little bit I think that would work pieces aside so I can grab them if I decide I need them. Oops, she got in there by mistake. I think I set aside the piece of vellum I want to cut. carried away. Hard to see the pencil mark. I also have stamps that I have out that I might be able to use for some of these tags.
And again, I will add something to that, but I don't know what yet. try to tie this lens onto it and see what we think of that. Don't know if I want to fuss with the wire on video because I'm not used to dealing with wire. This has, this is a baker's twine with a silver um, thread. I chose one of the thinner lenses so it doesn't weigh as much. Some of them are thicker. And these are vintage optical lenses. Got them at the flea market last year. Well, I think if I do that, I'm going to have to shorten it. Or maybe I'll just tuck it in there so that when you pull the tag out, it can dangle. And then I'll decide if I like it there or not. So for now, it's just going to get tucked in there. Okay. I have this really beautiful image from a book from the Stuben, or the Corning Glass Museum, and this is Stuben Glass. I thought I could make a little pocket over here for it. I'll have to back that onto something and then I can glue it on right there to be a pocket. Let's move on. So this is one of the bright pages with a lady with oranges and that was easy because I had this pretty handy. 
So I will also back that onto cardstock and glue that on as a little pocket. There's going to be a lot of pockets in this book. I'm not going to do anything with the noodle lady. I'm not going to try to represent every vendor of these children's book pages. I need to have some pages that remain flat. Um, this one is the music one. Musical instruments. So I have this. I thought I could just attach it right there. Doesn't have to be a tuck spot or anything. Just and then the violin on this side because <clears throat> this is in the middle so it will be on both sides. So what I will do is just fussy cut these and just maybe attach it. It could be a little tuck spot but it doesn't have to be. It could just be an embellishment. So I guess you don't need to see me do all of that, huh? I'll do that later. That's the lollipop lady. She's bright and fun. Now we're back to some Mrs. Cog's images. So this one is the sculptor. I'm going to have to search for something that I can put on this tag for the sculptor. And this one is the utensil maker. So I have this tag, or this um, advertisement, for one dozen spoons given for two years subscription. So I was thinking of putting this on the back just so you'd have it but then it would take up your writing space. But there's plenty of other writing space in here. So I think I will add this. You can write a little note up there. And here we have the locksmith. Well, I brought in clocks and gears and stuff, but I didn't bring the keys. I have another container, I think, that has keys. And I didn't put a tag in there. There we go. I have this piece of little chipboard that I could just add to that maybe, color it with something. And I don't think I have any key images. I got lots of clocks, jewelry, lanterns, some silver I think is what they are lamp, nails, more clocks. Yeah, I don't have any keys. I should have lots, and I have stamps. I can definitely do something on this tag, but I don't have anything out right now. And I'll have to add some paint to that, some silver paint or something. So I'm just going to tuck those in there for now. And that's all I'm going to do on that book or signature. Let's see what we can find in here. This one is ribbons. So I can make a pocket and decorate it with ribbons or make a... I don't know yet. I think I will flip it around and we have shoes because I have lots of images for shoes. So we'll do that. 
I just have to find the images. I'm not going to go searching for things because I'm almost out of time. This one is the Lamp Maker. And I liked the look of this lamp, but it's really like a camping lantern, but it looks like a real lamp. But they're too big. So I'm going to have to search for an image for the Lamp Maker. Yeah, way too big. And this is fine tableware. I'll have to look for that also. This one is vegetables. I'm sure I can find something to go with that. And wigs. We have umbrellas here and toys. I might end up flipping that around and using the toys. I don't know, I might have umbrella images. The wares maker and the wine maker. I think I have something for the wares maker. some of those. Just won't take the time to fussy cut right now. The blacksmith. I do have some iron things. I wonder where they went. I just had them. Oh, I got some more stuff right here. So these are iron. One of them has plumes, so I looked for some feathers. I've got a couple of feathers. Um, one of them is a fisherman, so I looked for fish images. Aha. What are these made out of? There's some lanterns and some trays. Some furniture, some weather vanes and the glass. Okay, so I'll use some of these for the blacksmith. This is just the boy at the end of the story walking home with all of his purchases. We have the tool maker, so I had this man making nails, so I might be able to do that, use that somehow on here, and the fisherman. I might just use these stickers. is books and clocks. So I think I don't want to cover up that page. So I might put this one in the middle here. Because I could I could definitely do clocks. So I'll put the clocks here. And I'll just make a little tuck spot clock there. That one's too tall, but that one would work. I like that one too. I 
think it'll be either this one or this one. Okay, we were already to the middle. And here we have the musician, so I can take another one of these music pieces that I cut out. That's too small. I have stamps too with musical instruments, so I might have to do a stamp. And I'll have to find a bottle that I can put on the perfumer. You can see I've got my work cut out for me just finding all of these different images. And then the last one is the plume master. So where did I put those feathers? I might have a, f a hat with feathers on it from my 1912 catalog, so I'll have to look for that too, that I might like better than these. And I can always do some embellishing on the outside of the pocket too. Okay, so that's a good start of at least finding stuff. I do have more to search for, but we're on our way. But this is really fun. It's like going on a, um, what do you call it, not a treasure hunt, where they give you a list of things to find. That's what it's like. <laughs> so I hope you're having fun with this. I'm having fun with it, and I hope that you will continue to watch the progress. I may yet put this in my shop. I had said that I was going to keep it, but I may end up putting it in my shop. I have not decided that yet. But, um, yeah, I hope that you're enjoying that and that you'll come back to see more. And I hope that you are having a creative day today. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.